Good evening and welcome to our program. This series is focusing on This Is Your FBI. This Is Your FBI was a radio crime drama which aired in the United States on ABC from April 6, 1945 to January 30th, 1953 for a total of 409 shows. The show featured true cases from the FBI and was told from an FBI agent's viewpoint. FBI Chief J. Edgar Hoover gave it his endorsement, calling it our show and calling it the finest dramatic program on the air. Generally, I do not include advisories. Given Hoover's polarizing nature, I will share this. Dramatized stories created for propaganda purposes are not history. They tell one biased side of the story, and in no way am I saying that these are reliable stories. I just believe them to be interesting when viewed through the scope of entertainment and weird history. Finally, I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to standalone media, we have included a link in the description. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This Is Your FBI. This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a few minutes, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, sponsors of this program, will have an important announcement for homeowners and for all families that are thinking of buying or building a home. If your husband or wife is not now listening to this program, get him or her. Both of you should hear the good news about America's finest plan for home ownership, a plan that can save you money and give you greater security in a home of your own. Tonight's FBI file, The Singing Swindler. It is a paradox of human nature that we are most easily deceived in that field which we know best. On strange ground, we protect ourselves with the armor of caution. While on familiar ground, we expose a vanity of infallibility, which, as demonstrated by tonight's case from the files of your FBI, is the Achilles heel by which we are felled. To the visitor, it must seem that every night is carnival night in the famous old French quarter of New Orleans. But when the sun goes down, the spirit of the fiesta comes up. And from the cafes and gardens of balconied houses, music and laughter pour out into a main stream of gaiety which courses through the narrow streets until dawn. On this particular night, in a small side street cafe, a tall, big-shouldered man sits alone at a table in a corner, sipping his fourth absinthe rapé and obviously enjoying the club's table singer as he finishes a ballad for a couple of honeymoons. Ran all alone like a queen on a throne. If I had, I uh, that was wonderful. Thanks a lot. Here, here's something for you. Oh, thanks very much. Now I better go over and see what he wants, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, some special song you'd like to hear? Yes, you bet your son. Sit down. Ah, uh, thank you. What would you like? Another drink. Hey, waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, give me another one of these things. Uh, what do you want? Oh, not a thing, thanks. Oh, what do you mean, not a thing? Everybody drinks with Bill Taylor. Now, what do you want? All right, scotch and water. Okay, waiter, you heard the man. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, what's your name, partner? Eddie Burnett. Well, put her there, partner. I'm Bill Taylor. I'm from Texas. <laughs> I kind of thought you might be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Eddie. Just made another killing in oil. I'm out tooting it up a little. I never drink when I work. Hey, 
I haven't given you any too, have I? Your record's clean with me, Bill. Well, here's 20. Uh, how's about another song? How's about Eyes of Texas? Great. Only, uh, you're going to be here a couple of minutes, aren't you, Bill? Well, where are you going, partner? Wait, here's another 20. Sit down. Oh, I'll be right back. I, uh, I just got to go over and sit with that old lady for a minute. Yeah? Well, what's an old lady like her doing around here alone? Well, she was telling me about it before you came in. Asked me to sing a special number for her. Is that so? Yeah. She said she and her husband always came here every year on their anniversary. Well, where's the old man? Well, it seems he died a couple of months ago, but she's decided to come anyway. Well, now, what do you know about that? Here are your drinks, sir. Well, uh, wait, uh, you see that old lady sitting over there? Yes, sir. Well, you bring her the best bottle of champagne you've got in the house and tell her it's an anniversary present. Yes, sir. Oh, that's pretty nice of you, Bill. Oh, that's nothing, partner. The, the, that's what money's for. You know, it's funny you being in the oil business. What's so funny about the oil business? Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, it's just that the old lady was telling me that her husband left her some oil leases. Yeah? On some land down in the Delta. Well, what do you know? Well, you know how old ladies are sometimes. Tell everybody their personal business. Sure, <laughs> sure. Say, uh, what'd she tell you about the leases? Well, she told me she didn't much know what to do about them, but she thought while she was here in New Orleans, maybe she could sell them. Sell them, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, buying them is my business. Well, do you want to meet her? Yes, I like her very much. Okay. I'll find out what hotel she's staying at. <laughs> partner, I like you. I like you too, Bill. Uh, do me a favor before you go, will you? I sure, partner. <laughs> oh, you got me doing it now. <laughs> What's the favor? Uh, sing Eyes of Texas. Okay. Hey, Joe, Eyes of Texas. The eyes of Texas are upon Come in, please. Mrs. Grayson? Uh, yes. I have this note to you. Oh. Uh, well, wait till I put on my spectacles. Uh, dear Mrs. Grayson, this is the gentleman I spoke to you about last night. His name is Bill Till. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, won't you please sit down? Well, thank you, ma'am. Oh, it's very kind of you, Mr. Taylor, to take the time to come and see me. Oh, no trouble at all, Mrs. Grayson. That's my business, oil leases. My... How lucky I am to meet a nice, honest man like you. Well, now, don't you worry, Mrs. Grayson. Old Bill Taylor's known as the most honest man in the state of Texas. Well, isn't that nice? Your wife must be so happy. Mary Lou? (laughs) Happiest wife in Texas. Yeah, but uh, let's get down to business, Mrs. Grayson. Oh, all right. (laughs) But I'm afraid that you have to do all the work. Oh, I don't mind that, big, strong man like me. I don't mind telling you I... Been trying to pick up some more leases down there on the Delta? Well, now, isn't it lucky that we met there? Sure is. For you and for me. Here. Here are the papers that I found in Dan's safe. Uh, there are five different ones. Uh, what do they all mean, Mr. Taylor? Now, they cover different parts of the land, but you just oh. leave everything to me, Miss Grace, and I won't cheat you. No, I don't believe you would, Mr. Taylor. Well, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Now, well, let's see. There's some 300 acres in all. Is that a lot? Oh, you bet it is. Oh. By George, right smack in the middle of the delta. Well, uh, what do you think it's worth, Mr. Taylor? Well, I'm going to tell you right out. It's worth $10,000 in cash to me. $10,000? Old oh. Bill Taylor, most honest man in Texas. That's what it's worth, and that's what you're going to get. Land say, Oh, I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Taylor. What <laughs> nonsense. This is a business proposition. Yeah, we'll just call up the public stenographer and draw up a transfer, and you'll have your money inside of an hour. My, my. Then, uh, it's a deal? Uh, Yes, Mr. Taylor, thank you. It's a deal. Not many blocks away from the Bio Hotel, where the deal between Mrs. Grayson and Mr. Taylor was consummated, Special Agent Nolan of the New Orleans field office of the FBI is just entering the office of Agent in Charge Clark. Did you send for me, sir? Uh, Yes, Nolan. I just received this alert from Washington on a swindler. Oh? Two weeks ago, she put over a job in Miami. A woman? Yes. 
Last week, it was Atlanta. Well, it sounds like she might be working the Southern Circuit. Yes, that's Washington's opinion. And New Orleans might be, or might have been, her next jump. What's her specialty? Well, she's an elderly woman who pretends to have been widowed recently, wants to dispose of property that her husband left her. Mm-hmm. In Miami, she sold a fake deed to a citrus farm. In, uh, in Atlanta, it was a fake deed to a thousand acres of pine trees. Here in New Orleans, it might be anything from oil wells to a sugar plantation. Well, that's about it. Here's a description. Okay. Our Miami and Atlanta offices are working on further details of a modus operandi. Anything you want me to do? Yes, I want you to start checking on all hotels. How much did he go for, Granny? Oh, you mean Mr. Taylor, Eddie? I wasn't thinking about Clark Gable. Don't be funny, young man. Okay, okay. Hey, but what about that cheap bum trying to double-cross you and get those leases cheap? Well, it just shows, Eddie, that what I've told you is true. Honesty is always the best policy. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you didn't tell me yet. Didn't tell you what, Eddie? How much did you get? Oh, uh, 5000 uh, And we've got... Granny, now, don't uh, play games with me. How much did you get from the sucker? Oh, all right. I, I got 7500 Why, Grandma, what big lies you have. Why, my boy... Can what? it... I know you got 10 Gs. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What'd you lie to me for? Well, I was going to save it for a rainy day. Okay, but don't save for the Johnstown flood. My gracious, here we've been standing talking all this while. Eddie, we've got to move along. Okay, I'll be packed in a minute. I'm going to leave the door between our rooms open just so you don't get any ideas about making the trip by yourself. Why, Eddie, if you're going to talk like that to me, well... I'm just afraid that I'll never be able to swindle anybody else with you again. And you know what they say in baseball? What? They say never break up a winning team. Agent in charge, Clark speaking. This is Nolan. Oh, hello. Did you get a lead? Not yet. I'm still checking hotels. Thought I'd better call in. Yes, I'm glad you did. I just received more details from Miami and Atlanta. Good. What's new? A woman has an assistant. Oh? A young man about 35, 6 feet, 180 pounds. He plays the part of a table singer in nightclubs and cafes. Oh, he's the bird dog in spotting potential victims, huh? That's right. And if they're working in New Orleans, he might be easier to get a line on than the woman. Well, then suppose I hop over to the quarter and start checking cafes. Right. I'll put another man on the hotels. <laughs> How are you coming along, Granny? Yeah, I'm almost finished packing, Eddie. Are you all finished? Yeah, all packed and ready to go. No, who can that be? Don't answer, Granny. Oh, don't be silly, Eddie. You, uh, I've got to answer. You get back to your room and close the door. Okay, but I'll keep it unlocked just in case. Oh, oh, oh I... hello again, Mr. Taylor. May I come in? There's something I want to talk to you about. Why, of course. There's something we overlooked this morning, Mrs. Grayson. Overlooked? Uh, well, what was that? I reckon you could have knocked me over with a feather, ma'am. Oh, no, not a big man like you. Uh, but what came as such a surprise? You. Me? Oh, well, I'm sure I don't understand what you mean. What I overlooked was uh, checking those leases with the records. The records? Yes, the records at the county courthouse where all the leases are placed on file. Well, I told you, Mr. Taylor, that I don't understand much about those things. You see, my husband... It's too late for that, Mrs. Grayson. Too late for... Yes. You see, I called the Crescent City Oil Company right off. Well, what did you do that for? To see if they wanted to buy the leases. And what did they say, Mr. Taylor? Uh, they weren't interested. Well, now, I don't understand that. You told me this morning that the land was so valuable. It is valuable. But you see, there was a slight coincidence. Uh, coincidence? Yes. It just so happened that the Crescent City Oil Company already owns those 300 acres. They do? Well, yeah, that is a coincidence, isn't it? Mrs. Grayson, I'm a big man in the state of Texas. I didn't call the police the first thing. Well, uh... uh 
Because I feel a little embarrassed, you know, telling him I got caught in a swindle like this. Oh, Mr. Taylor, please. But, Mrs. Grayson, if I don't get that $10,000 in the next minute, I'm going to pick up that phone. Stay away from that door. Eddie. Well, dog my soul. Uh, Eddie, be careful with that gun. You're pointing it right at Mr. Taylor. Yes, I am, and it's loaded, too. Don't worry, Mrs. Grayson. He's not going to do anything with the gun. I said stay away from that phone, and I meant it. Well, I certainly was buffalo. Don't come any closer, Taylor. Why not? This gun might accidentally go off. Uh, what do you want me to do? Stop coming toward me, Taylor. I'll give, give it. it. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Grace and I told you Eddie wasn't going to do much with that gun. So you did, Mr. Taylor. I'll certainly say that for you. Now, Eddie, we're a pretty even match without guns. So, get up. Oh, I got enough. Oh, no, Eddie. I just started to play this game. Get up. Look out, Eddie. 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 I think you've just about got enough now, young man. So, I'll call the police and let them... Why in the world didn't you hit him sooner, Granny? Well, that was the first chance I had, Eddie. Boy, he's really out. What'd you hit him with? That beautiful big vase that was on the piano. Oh, remind me to pay the hotel for it when we check out. Pay for it? Are you crazy? Now, Eddie, we must pay for it. You don't want us to get a reputation for not paying our bills, do you? <laughs> Back to the FBI file in just a moment after an important message to American home buyers and home owners. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, I heard a story of a little girl with tears in her eyes. Because of her, thousands of American home owners live in greater security today. Some years ago, the president of the Equitable Society happened to see this little girl crying as if her heart would break, while the sheriff's men moved her family's furniture out into the yard. On inquiry, he learned that her mother, a young widow, had lost their home through a mortgage foreclosure. Shortly thereafter, the president of the Equitable Society called his associates together and said, we're going to have a plan for homeowners to prevent tragedies such as this, a mortgage that will be as near foreclosure-proof as possible. And so was started the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan which offers you these five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Immediately, the widow owns her home free and clear. Two, a special cash fund is built up, and it's always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Four, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Five, one low monthly payment covers everything and provides free and clear ownership in the time you select. Frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. If you are planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, Get complete information on the Assured Home Ownership Plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, -E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Singing Swindler. No one likes to admit publicly that he has been duped. That is human nature. And swindlers make capital of it every day. But this false expression of self-pride which restrains the victim of a swindle from going to the police sometimes goes a step farther. It urges the victim to take matters into his own hands. And this can prove to be a most costly procedure. 
A few minutes ago, agent in charge Clark of the New Orleans FBI office received a telephone call from police inspector Rickert. Clark and Special Agent Nolan have just now stepped off the elevator on the eighth floor of the Bio Hotel and reached room 824. Oh, come in, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector. Mr. Taylor, this is Mr. Clark, and this is Mr. Nolan. They're from the FBI. Yeah, mighty glad to see you men here so quick. We got here as soon as we heard from the inspector. Yes, Mr. Taylor. I called him as soon as I found out from the clerk at the desk about the old lady. Well, then the description checked, Inspector? Perfect. And it checked on her accomplice, too. A singer. That's the fellow. Goes by the name of Eddie Burnett. Well, what was the racket this time, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, Mrs. Grayson, if that's her name, she sold me some oil leases. They were fakes, naturally. Yes. How much did you pay her? Ten thousand in cash. Mm -hmm. And then? I found out they were fakes... I came up here to get my money back. Well, I wish you'd call the police sooner, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, every time I touch my head, I wish I had two. Inspector, where was Mr. Taylor found? He was right on the floor, right over there. I see. The maid found him when she came to make up her room. How long ago did they check out? A little more than two hours ago. How did they leave the hotel? I asked the cab starter about that. He said they just walked out. But didn't they have any bags? Yes, that's what made the starter remember them. Nobody leaves the bayou with the luggage and carries it themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, they couldn't have walked far. My guess is they caught a cab at the corner. Yeah, that sounds logical. If they did, they could have been at the airport in half an hour. We'll check the airport, Inspector. But I have an idea that if they were smart enough to walk away from the hotel, they haven't left such an obvious trail as that. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right. Nolan, start a check on all railroads and airlines. I'll have Blackwell go to work on the bus terminals. Oh, uh, one more thing, Miss Clark. Yes, Inspector? Here's some handwriting that might be useful. Who's it? The uh, table singers. Yes. It's the note of introduction he wrote when I came to meet Mrs. Grayson. Well, thanks very much, Inspector. All right. And thank you, Mr. Taylor, for being so cooperative. Come on, Nolan. We've got work to do. Yeah, what do you want now? Eddie, please speak a little more respectfully. And Eddie, must you sing all the time? Well, what's the matter with my singing? I didn't say there was anything... I sing torch songs like Crosby. Well, let's drop the subject. All I ask is sing when you get paid for it. Okay. I meant to talk to you about that. You don't want me to pay you for singing in this room, do you, Eddie? No, no, that ain't what I mean. I mean, when do I go to work again? Now, you let me take care of the business end. I say we stay under for a little while. But the cops don't know we're in Chicago. Well, I certainly hope you're right, my boy. You know, I give you credit when you got it coming. It's pretty cute the way we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, you feel pretty good today, don't <laughs> well, you? Why not? We've pulled three jobs and we've got over 28,000 between us. Two more jobs, we'll have 25 apiece and... Well, then you can sing all day long. Okay, okay, only let's get the next job started. Oh, all right, if you're that impatient, go ahead and get yourself a job. You mean? Certainly, I never say anything I don't mean. All right, here I go. Oh, come in, Nolan. What's up, Clark? Memphis office just phoned on the uh, Grayson case? That's right. The car the two of them rented here was found abandoned in Memphis. Oh, that was pretty cute. Well, the Memphis office took all the descriptions we wired out to the airport. And? And found the two of them had hopped a plane for Chicago two days ago. Well, that means they're probably still there. That's it. They've never worked that territory before. Look, there's a flight out of here in 20 minutes for Chicago. I'm going to be on it. Okay, I'll call and make your reservation. Good. Then call the Chicago office and alert them. And tell them what time I get in. <laughs> Hello, this is Special Agent Clark. Will you put me through to Mr. Walker, please? Hello, Clark. Hello, Walker. Where are you? I'm out at the airport. I just got in. Any word? I'm sorry, Clark, but we haven't been able to dig up a single lead. We checked all nightclubs and theatrical agencies. No lead at any of the hotels either, huh? Well, unless the room clerks are lying to us, they haven't checked in at any hotel we've been to so far. Yeah. We're still working on the hotels, though. How do you account for the fact that he hasn't gone to work yet? 
what the theatrical agencies tell me, this isn't a very good time for male table singers. Oh, what do you mean? I hear all the places are putting in girls. Girls, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, wait. I think I've got an idea. Anything I can help on? No, no thanks. I can handle this alone. I'll be in the office in about an hour. Oh. Well, well, what luck? Ah, uh, nobody's booking any male singers, so I'll take a crack at this. Uh, uh, what's that? Just an ad in the afternoon paper. Huh? What does it say? Uh, some cafe wants a male singer, but I've got a right for an interview and an audition. Well, you're not worried about taking an audition, are you? Well, the job only pays 50 in tips. My, they don't know how lucky they are getting Crosby that cheap. Hello, Granny. And did you get a call yet, Eddie? No. Uh-huh. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm sure you will. Uh, why, what are you doing, Eddie? Packing. Pa- what for? I did a little thinking while you were downstairs. What do you mean? Now, look. I don't like being the number two man in the act, Granny. What do you mean, Eddie? I mean I'm pulling out right now and taking all the dough with me. Eddie! Now, give me that dough and give it to me quick. Put down that pistol! Where's the money? Stop it, I tell you, I... Okay, you ask for it. Drop that gun, Bernard. Drop it! Who are you? What's the idea? Special agents of the FBI. FBI? That's right. You answered our ad and wrote us for an audition, Burnett. Your handwriting tallied with some we got in New Orleans. From a Mr. Taylor. After being tried and convicted, Mrs. Grayson and Edward Burnett were sentenced to long terms in the federal penitentiary. Again, we repeat what we have stated before on This Is Your FBI. Swindlers could be put out of business overnight if you, their potential victims, would exercise the simple caution of investigating the stranger with a proposition before doing business with him. Until everyone does exercise that simple caution, your FBI will remain on the job 24 hours a day protecting you, their employers. You, the American people. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. Now a quick review of the important advantages offered homeowners and home buyers by the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Don't forget, the mortgage interest is only 4%. The mortgage is paid off in full if the owner dies. A cash fund is built up to be used in financial emergencies. If you are seriously interested... Get in touch with the Equitable Society representative in your community. He has literature that explains the assured home ownership plan clearly. Call him tomorrow. Call the number of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Carnival Killing. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's broadcast was directed by William M. Sweets. The music was under the direction of Frederick Steiner. 
The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Andre Baruch speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Carnival Killing on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And now a special request to boys and girls. If your father and mother don't happen to be listening to This Is Your FBI tonight, please get them. Tell them that the Equitable Life Assurance Society, the sponsor of this program, is going to make an important announcement to homeowners and to all families that are thinking of buying or building a home. Tell mother and dad they're going to miss something if they don't get the facts on America's finest plan for home ownership. Tonight's FBI file, The Carnival Killing. Day after day, the criminal goes on defying it. And as twice reflected in tonight's case from the files of your FBI... Day after day, he is caught up in its inevitability. The inevitability of that ancient truth which disciplines all human conduct and from which there is no exemption. Be sure your sins will find you out. Our story tonight could take place in most any kind of setting you could name. And it could involve persons of most any rank or station in life. But it just so happens that this particular time, it actually took place in a carnival setting. That music, of course, is coming from a merry-go-round somewhere down the midway. And the crowd, just part of the Saturday afternoon throng. Over here to one side, the main money wagon. The attractive girl seated at the open window is the cashier. And the dapper young gent in the plaid suit and straw hat just walking up to her runs the concession just across the midway. Hi, babe. Hi, Larry. Well, how goes with the ump chase, huh? Oh, kind of slow. Mm, yeah, I got the same complaint. No booze? Not enough. But uh, here's a hundred you can salt away for us. Hey, that ain't bad. Well, if the suckers will start throwing hoops, I ought to take in another yard by shutdown. Keep slugging then, Junior. And pretty soon, babe. You get that ring. You mean the big one? The one we've seen in St. Louis? <laughs> oh, are you kidding? That comes heavy, sweetie. Well, it was your idea. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll keep slugging for it. Here, give me uh, four rolls of quarters, huh? Mm-hmm. Here you are. Uh, see you later, babe. So long, Larry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Well, we settled the intro real quick, didn't we? Did we? My name's Jack Crawford. What's yours? People who know me call me Babe. I'll buy that. You don't know me. I will. <laughs> Fast operator. How long have you been waiting for that ring? You were on the Erie. That's right. Why should the ring interest you? 
With me, you could have had it by now. Stop, will you? I mean it. Look. That ring has a marriage deal wrapped around it, mister. So, uh, I guess the show is over. Just the first act, babe. What do you mean? Here comes the second act now. Oh, he's seen you talking to me. What's wrong with that? Larry don't like for me to fool around. No kidding. Okay, Mac, quit bothering to help and move along before I... Before you what? Just get moving, that's all. You remember me now, don't you? Aren't you? What are you talking about? Babe, there's an old thing. You can't fool all of the people all of the time. Not even with a mustache. Am I right, Mr. Hampton? His name ain't Hampton. It's Marlin. Back in Terre Haute, it was Hampton. Larry, what's this all about? Oh, well, he's got me mixed up, that's all. Babe, tell the guy to quit covering, will you? It just so happens that your boyfriend here is a deserter from the Army. What? And on account of that, the FBI is looking for him. And That's they... enough. I had figured it would be. Larry. Now, as I was saying, back in Terre Haute, his name was Hampton. We were old pals back there, right, Larry? Well, even though he won't admit it, honey, we were. And because we were pals, I'm going to have to ask him for a little favor. What do you want? I got to get out of circulation for a while. And this looks like a good place to do it. So, I'm moving in with you. Now, wait a minute. And remember, before you make any beef, that I'm in a real good spot to blow a whistle. So, how about it? Okay. Well, that's the end of the second act. Third act coming up, eh? <laughs> A few miles away in the St. Louis office of the FBI, agent in charge Phillips has just summoned Special Agent Gaynor to his office. You want to see me, Mr. Phillips? Yes, Gaynor. Well, what's up? Just got a follow-up on that Oklahoma bank robbery yesterday. Really? The agents down there caught two of the men early this morning. Did they talk? Yes. Here's the description of the third man still at large. Hmm. Has it been checked with Washington? That's Washington's check on it in your hand now. Just came in on the teletype. Oh, the man's name is Jack Crawford. He's already served two years for robbery, too. His home state is Indiana, and he just may be headed for there. Which could bring him through Missouri and maybe even St. Louis. How is he traveling last? In the car they used in the robbery. There's an alarm out on it now. Well, he may abandon that soon. If so, it'll make his trail that much hotter. Well, are we getting a set of fingerprints and a photo on him? In the morning, airmail. Good. You better contact police headquarters here right away and see that they're up to date on the case, and state police, too. Right. Just a minute. How are you tonight, babe? Hello there. Got sick of hanging around Larry's trailer. Thought I'd come over and see yours. Uh-huh. Is he asking me in? Okay, come ahead. Thanks. Hey, it's real nice. All them curtains and stuff, just like home. Thanks. You, uh, through work for the day? No, I just got two hours off. Well, I got two free hours myself. Mind if I sit down? Go ahead. Thanks. Where's Larry? Out clipping the suckers, I guess. <laughs> you know, this county business is quite a touch. Imagine making a living out of people throwing hoops at little kids. Does Larry know you came over here? Why? He ain't gonna like it. That gonna bother you? No. Then, uh... Let's not worry about him, hmm? Okay. Tell me something, will you? What? This ring business. You really gonna marry the guy? That's the general idea. Why? Why do most people get married? Well, the book says love. You know, that moonlight and roses stuff. But, uh, I don't seem to catch any of that going on with you. You're doing an awful fast add-up, mister. No. Just watching history repeat itself. What do you mean? 
I already told you I knew Larry back in Terre Haute. So? So I've seen him in action with other dames. He's one of them nice guy characters. You know, sweetheart, that's all right for squares, but it ain't for you. Am I right? Want some coffee? Am I right? You're right. You know what you really want? Someone like me. I'm gonna make that coffee. Wait a minute. Come in. Well? Now look, sweetheart. Who is it? Me, Larry. Oh. Let him in. But he... Let him in. Hiya, honey. I just got a minute and I thought I'd... What are you doing here, Jack? Just dropped in. Babe, has this guy been bothering you? No. No, he, he, he just came here looking for you. He knew where to find me. He came here to see you. Look. He... Remember, I'm your guest. You forget it. You'll be Uncle Sam's guest, so just take it easy. See you later, babe. Phillips speaking. Now, this is Gaynor, Mr. Phillips. Oh, got a lead on Jack Crawford? Yes, the police just found his car. Where? He drove it into a garage here in St. Louis yesterday morning early and apparently abandoned it. That gives him over a 24-hour start on us. I know. Any new auto thefts reported? No. And start checking bus, railroad, and airline terminals and ticket offices. You've got his photo. Yes. If he didn't steal or buy transportation out of here, then he's somewhere in the vicinity. I hope he is. So do I. Keep in touch. Right. Is it, Larry? I thought you were going to wait for me at the money wagon. I didn't say I would. But you always do. Look, I've got to get back to the trail. Well, wait, wait a minute, babe. Look, i got to talk to Save you. Save it, will you, Larry? I'm tired. Well, I just wanted to tell you, honey, I, I'm sorry about this afternoon. I didn't mean to blow my top. But that guy coming to see you, finding him there, I just couldn't take you it. You told me all that. Good night, Larry. Uh, let me come in a minute, babe. Uh, I've got to talk this out with you. It's been talked out. Please, huh? J- just for a minute. Okay, come ahead. Don't forget this is getaway night. We've got a long trip ahead of us. I know. Can you turn on the light? Yeah, sure. There we are. Hiya, Larry. Jack. What are you doing here? Waiting for babe. What for? Because I wanted to see her. Look, you get out of here. Get out quick. Now, wait a minute. I think Babe should have something to say about that. You want me to go, hon? Leave her out of this. Look, please, don't start anything. Yeah, the army might not like it. Jack, I got some news for you on that army business. It isn't going to work anymore. No? No. You know why I deserted. You know I went over the hill because my mother was sick. And at the time, I didn't have guts enough to go back. But your moving in on me has changed my mind. This hero talk is for your benefit, honey. No, no, no. It's for something I found again after a long, long time. My self-respect. Oh, this is great. Tell us more, Daddy. I've finished. Now get out. What for? You're going to turn yourself in. There's no need for me to get out. Ever. What do you mean? You tell him, babe. No, Jack, please. Okay, then I'll spill It makes no difference to Babe whether you go through with this patriotic pitch or not. What? She's changed her mind, too. Babe, what's he talking about? Look, let's not argue any more tonight, huh? Honey, he might as well know. Well? She's found herself a real guy. Why, you dirty... (coughs) Jack! Jack, darling, did he hurt you? Yeah, he hurt me, but not as bad as this bottle will hurt him. Oh! Hit him awful hard. So what? He's bleeding awful bad. Jack, I think he's dead. A 
And now, before the FBI file on the carnival killing resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, I met a man with one of the biggest smiles I've ever seen in my life. Boy, do I feel good, he grinned, and he waved a paper at me. You see that, he said? That's the mortgage on my house. And today, it's just a piece of paper. That mortgage is all paid off every last cent. I own my home free and clear, and nobody can take it away from me. Well, there's no question about it. One of the red-letter days in any man's life is the day he pays off his mortgage. And that's a day that's not too far off when you buy a house through the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. A plan which combines these five advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Immediately, the widow owns her home free and clear. Two, a special cash fund is built up, and it's always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, mortgage interest, not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Four, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyers' fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission or bonus charges. Five, one low monthly payment covers everything and provides free and clear ownership in the time you select. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. -E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Carnival Killing. Sometimes fate inflicts a far severer penalty for a crime than justice would have meted out. Justice would not have demanded the life of the army deserter, the man called Larry Marlin, but fate in the form of a conspiracy by one who found out his crime did take his life. So however harsh the penalty, it confirms the inevitability of that truth. Be sure your sins will find you out. And as for the man who took his life... It is next morning now, and in answer to a call from police headquarters a few minutes ago, Agent in Charge Phillips of the FBI's St. Louis office, accompanied by Special Agent Gaynor, have just entered the city morgue. Here's the body right here, Mr. Phillips. We knew, of course, this couldn't be Jack Crawford. No, that's not Crawford. But since no identification was found on him, we thought we'd better check with you in case he just might be somebody else the FBI was interested in. I'm glad you did. Took a set of fingerprints for you. Here they are. Thanks. Anything familiar about him to you, Gaynor? No, I, I can't say that there is. Look again, Gaynor. Forget there's a mustache on him. Yes. Yes, there is something kind of familiar about that face, now that you mention it. Lawrence Hampton. Hampton? He's an army deserter. We took his photo out of the files just last week. Oh, sure, I remember. I'm certain it's he. Well, the fingerprints will tell for sure. Where was this body found, officer? Way out near the edge of town. South side, just before daylight. It's a nasty gash on his head. Yes. We thought at first he was a hit-and-run victim. But we checked some fragments of glass. We found the wound. They weren't from headlights. What's that? They appear to be pieces from a whiskey bottle. And this was deliberate murder. I'd think so. Any trace of the whiskey bottle near the body? No, and we did a thorough search for it, too. It's my theory that the murder was committed somewhere else, and the body dumped there. Where are his clothes? We had them outside in the locker. Gainer. Yes, sir? Check them over. See what you can find. Right. I'm going to take these prints back to the office and make sure they're Hampton's. <laughs> Too 
bed? Yeah. I thought you were working right through. Well, I had to get a relief. I feel awful. What's the matter? Now, what do you think? Look, forget that, will you? Jack, how can I? Nothing's going to happen, baby. When they find the body, they'll think he was hit by a car, that's all. Besides, he's a lamester. The cops won't care how he got it. That part of it don't bother me. What are you feeling so bad about? The way it happened. You're killing him like that. Look. How many times do I have to tell you I did it in self-defense? Besides, it brought us together, didn't it? Yeah. All right. Anybody been asking for him? Sure. What'd you tell him? Just like we made it up that he went off on a bender this morning as soon as we hit the lot. Probably wound up in St. Louis. That should cover it good. Jack, let's get out of here. Quit the show? Yeah. Look, honey, if you take a run out, you might as well put an ad in the paper that you've done the job. I'd done it. Sure. So take a pill for your nerves, kid, and go on back to work. Everything's going to turn out fine. Can I come in, Mr. Phillips? Yes, come ahead, Gaynor. How'd you make out? I have plenty to report. Good. Oh, uh, by the way, the victim is definitely Hampton. I checked the prints. And I checked his clothes. What'd you find? Well, nothing much until I got down to his shoes. Well, what about them? Well, I examined the heels. Uh -huh. and they were made of rubber, and yeah. stuck in the indentations were bits of what turned out to be popcorn, peanut shells, and sawdust. That sounds like you've been to the circus, but there aren't any playing in St. Louis. Well, there was a carnival playing quite near where Hampton was found. It closed last night. I see. Now, if the officer's theory was right, if Hampton was killed elsewhere and dumped on the highway... The murder might have been committed on or near the carnival grounds. Yes. And I'm checking to find out where the show moved to, and well, meanwhile I wondered if I should cooperate with the local police and hop out and go over the grounds with them. Good idea. Get on it right away. Phillips speaking. Uh, this is Gaynor, Mr. Phillips. Oh, where are you, Gaynor? I just left the carnival grounds. Any luck? Yes, plenty. We found a number of blood-stained fragments of the bottle that was used in the murder. That was a break. I know. The neck of the bottle was intact, and there appears to be a good set of fingerprints on it. Fine, fine. And we found these fragments where the trailers had been parked, the trailers that the people in the show lived in. I see. Well, that could localize the killing. Yes. Now, has any report come in on where the show moved to? Not yet. It shouldn't be hard to find. Well, I'll bring the section of the bottle with the prints back with me. Good. We can do a quick check in our files before sending them on to Washington. Yes, sir. I'll be right over. Gaynor. Yes, sir? Will you put those prints under the glass again, please? Yes, sir. There's something familiar about that one whorl. Hand me that stack of prints there. All right. I'm just going to play a hunch. Here you are. Now, let me see. That's identical. Those lines check. Little break there. It's the same gainer, the same prints. My hunch was right. Well, who is it? Our elusive friend, Jack Crawford. Crawford? Yes. Really? Well, how did he and Hampton ever get together? Well, that's what we have to find out. You say this bottle was found near where they parked the employees' trailers? That's right. There's a chance Crawford is somehow linked with that show. Well, a report just came in. We know they play where they're playing now. It's only 50 miles from I here. think we'd better get out there fast. Who is it? Let me in. Come on. What'd you have the door locked for? I ain't looking for company. Thought you were going to keep working. Oh, Jack, I had to quit. A thousand pills wouldn't do me any good. No, really? I mean it. Every time a stranger had come up to the booth, I think it was a cop getting set to ask a few questions. I felt people standing in the crowds looking at me like they were watching my every move. Hey, take it easy, will you? Will you take I it easy? I can't go on with this anymore. We've got to get out of here, and right now. What'll we use for dough? I got Larry's money. Some he gave me toward the ring. How far will that get us? I don't care. We've got to go now. Okay, babe. We do it your way. 
But how do we explain pulling out? Well, I'll say that I'm going to St. Louis to look for Larry. That'll do, I guess. You go get the car. It's parked in the lot. Okay. Stay where you are, Crawford. Huh? Don't try anything. Jack, who's that? We're special agents of the FBI. What? F- we want to talk to you both about the murder of Larry Hampton. <laughs> Jack Crawford was sentenced to a long term in the penitentiary for the murder of Larry Hampton. His female companion was also sent to prison for her part in the crime. Why do criminals go on defying the inevitability of that inexorable truth? Be sure your sins will find you out. Why do they go on making their futile challenges to the inescapability of justice? Why do they play a game they cannot possibly beat? It's not even a gamble, for a gamble presupposes a chance to win. But justice gives no odds. Justice is unbeatable. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. But now, let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that one low monthly payment covers everything. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure-proof. These are only a few of the advantages of the Assured Home Ownership Plan. To get the full story, talk to the Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives you all details. Look in your local phone book for the name, The Equitable Life Assurance Society, E-Q-U-I, T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Horse Player. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. And now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Horse Player. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, 
an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Do you own your own home, or are you planning to buy or build a home? then we suggest that you have pencil and paper ready to make notes when the Equitable Life Assurance Society, sponsor of this program, tells you about America's finest plan for home ownership. The announcement on this plan is due in about 14 minutes. Have your pencil ready because this Equitable Society plan can save you money and give you greater security in a home of your own. Tonight's FBI file, The Fugitive Horse Player. There are many decent, honest people connected with the sport of horse racing. These people are interested in trying to keep the sport clean and well conducted. However, there are millions of loose dollars connected with the business. And where you find millions of loose dollars, you will also find many loose characters. Parasites who will engage in any amount of hard work to make a dishonest dollar. Such a parasite of racing is the talc. The genius with patches in his pants who offers to make you a millionaire overnight. Sometimes the price is $10. Sometimes the price is $5. And sometimes, as you will learn from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, he takes his payment in blood. <music> Just about the time a recent meeting opened at an eastern racetrack, a shabby office was opened in the large city nearby. There was more than coincidence in the twin opening, because the office was to be the headquarters for Joe Muncy. Official title... Joe Muncy Tout. Muncy, a trimly built dapper man, is sitting at his desk. Brownie, his girl, his secretary, his wife, was just entered the office in the small reception room. Joe. Come right in, Miss Brown. What Save is that? Oh, thought you had a customer, Brownie. Are you kidding? Well, don't worry, baby. That code ad I put in the morning record will bring him in. The place to find suckers is at the track. We'll get a bite right here. Don't say that word bite. It makes me hungry. Look, baby, I don't like this no dough routine any more than you do. Then let's get out to the track and find some umpchays. Brownie, you don't have to go looking for horse players. If they think you know something, they'll come looking for you. That ad in the paper will bring us a cup. Yeah, listen, see what I told you? Somebody come in. Probably the landlord. All right, open the door, open the door. Don't let okay. him get away. Okay. Something I can do for you, sir? Uh, yes, I, I saw your ad in the morning record. Oh. Uh, don't keep the gentleman waiting, Miss Brown. Show him right in. Come inside, please. Uh, thank you. This gentleman has come here in regard to your ad, Mr. Muncy. Oh, splendid. splendid. Uh, that'll be all, Miss Brown. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down, Mr. Uh, Adams. Sit down, Mr. Adams. Uh, Muncy's the name. Joe Muncy. Oh, how do you do? Fine, fine. Uh, Mr. Adams is a new customer. You're entitled to know about the firm. Established 1933, 15 years of satisfied customers. We pick them, you play them, results guaranteed. Uh, I see. And I suppose, like the dozens of other turf lovers that have been in here this morning, you're interested in today's code special. Well, uh, yes. You couldn't have picked a better day, Mr. Adams. I can underwrite the fact that today's pig will be on the bill daily from wire to wire. Well, I, uh, I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. Oh, just parlance of the turf, Mr. Adams. This horse is a sure winner. Well, now, uh, how much is the code special? Since you're a new customer, you're entitled to a special rate. The usual tariff is 20 bob, but I'm letting you in for a saw. What's a saw? Ten dollars. Oh, well, that's certainly reasonable enough. Uh, let me see now. Goodness, I thought I had ten dollars. I'm afraid I haven't anything less than a hundred. Well, I'd be... A hundred? Uh, yes, can you change it? Well, not at the moment. I... Just, just sent my bookkeeper to the bank to make a deposit. Well, now, maybe I can go downstairs and get some change. No, 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 huh? no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Adams. Just sit right down there. Well, very well. Mr. Adams, I'm going to ask you a very direct question. Yes? Just 
What kind of money are you prepared to bet? Well, uh, if I thought a horse had a real good chance, I, I'd be willing to wager a thousand dollars. I'm going to sit down too. You said a thousand dollars. That's right. A thousand dollars. Well, that does it. I'm going to break a rule of a lifetime, Mr. Adams. I'm going to give you a complete and absolute stranger. Joe Muncy's super special. Well, now, how much does that cost? Absolutely nothing. Well, I, I, I don't understand. You're getting the winner absolutely free. All you got to do is bet 20% for me. What do you mean? If you bet a grand and you lay two yards, 200, that is, you bet that much for me. You understand? Well, that certainly sounds fair enough. Uh, I'll uh, have to go uh, to get the money, though. Well, okay, okay. But you'll be back here at noon and we'll go out to the track together, right? I'll be here. You can count on it. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be getting along. Okay, Mr. Adams. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Muncy. Goodbye, Mr. Adams. Goodbye. <sighs> Brownie, Brownie. What is it? Sweetheart, did we just make a score? That was the sweetest I, I... heard everything. What's with that tone of voice? What's with letting that short ten bucks get away? Chicken feed, honey. The sucker is good for a bundle. If he comes back... He'll come back. And what's the super special you dreamed up that's going to come through today? Then I get one. What's the best bet in the scratch sheet? Breakaway in the third. That's the super special. And if he blows the dupe? He's a stick out. Besides, we got 200 going for us for nothing. Before we're through, baby, we're liable to wind up with 20, 50, maybe 100 G's. Yeah. You got two bits? I'm hungry. <laughs> Farther downtown that same morning in the local office of the FBI, Special Agent Terrell is just entering the office of an assistant to the agent in charge. Did you want to see me, Mr. Naylor? Yes, Terrell. Say, did you ever hear of a town called Bentley? No. It's about 100 miles upstate. It must just be a wide place in the road. It's bigger than that. It's at least big enough to have a bank where a teller could get away with $28,000. Well. The teller didn't show up this morning. He left Bentley sometime after 5 o'clock yesterday. They think he's come here? They think it's possible, but they have no evidence yet. Has he any friends or relatives here? None that they know of. Mm -hmm. I think you'd better train up there right away and investigate. You'll be back in the morning. Okay. The missing teller's name is Fred Williams. He's probably changed that by now. Yes. He'd been with the bank 12 years. One of their most trusted employees. Did he take the $28,000 all in one lump? No. The defalcations cover a period of a year. Oh. But he did take a little over 10000 of it yesterday. Must have known the examiners would do then. Not necessarily. Anyway, do a thorough checkup on his friends and personal habits. We may get a good lead on him that way. Right. It's almost post time. You want the glasses, Mr. Adams? Oh, yeah, yes, thank you. Now, let me see. Which one is breakaway, Mr. Muncy? Uh, that uh, chestnut colt with number seven on the saddlecloth. Number seven, oh, yes. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. He'd be even more beautiful when they put his number up there on the tote board. I don't like that outside post position. Brownie, breakaway can stop for lunch at the head of the stretch with these pigs and still win it. Well, I'm glad you're so confident, Mr. Muncy. You know how confident I am? No. With the price up to two to one, I think you ought to press. Press? Yeah, press. Send in another thousand. This is the bet of the year. I hope you're right. You're going to press them? Oh, no, no, no. I'm satisfied. We're winning $2,000 on a race is enough for me. Ah, I get it. You want to see if my merchandise is any good first, eh? <laughs> Well, uh, something like that. Why, Mr. Adams, the last time I had a loser, they closed the schools for three days. It was also Christmas time. It is now post time. Uh, too late to make another bet now, even if you want to do. When that bell rings, the windows are closed. I wish this race would start. They'd be out of there... Any second now. Huh? Keep your eye on that outside stall. And the Get off! Get off there. Let's break away. Let's break away. Huh? He must be in the pack. But come on, break away. And for the lead, that's Western Story, Transatlantic and Hot Tamale. Huh? Then comes Glamour Boy, Dixie Lee, Southern Cross, and the last horse is Breakaway. We got left. What? Left at the post. Oh, goodness, there goes my thousand. Not yet, Mr. Adams. Not yet. Come on, you Breakaway. In the back stretch is Western Story by one Hot Tamale and Southern Cross, neck and neck for second. 
A gap of three lengths, we come to Dixie Lee, and on the rail, breakaway. He's breakaway, breakaway Mr. Adams, he's breakaway. Back, huh? boy, and the last horse is Transatlantic. He's making a move. What? Breakaway is making a move. What? Is that good, Mr. Munson? Shut up, will you? Come on, breakaway, come whip on. Whip him, Eddie, whip him. Go to the whip. Come on, and come on, Eddie. Stretch that southern cross in front with breakaway ranging alongside. Come on, come on Eddie. Eddie. Back, we have hot tamale. Then Dixie Lee, Glamour Boy, Breakaway. Western Story, and the last one is Francis Lambert. Come on, Eddie, come on, come with that horse. Oh, Breakaway, April in it. Come on, Eddie, come on, come on. We win it, we win it. Oh, we win it. <sighs> uh, I was never worried. Mr. Muncy, how much do I win? Well, they ain't put the prices up yet, but you should win over 2000 Oh, that's wonderful. And hey, Mr. Adams, let me tell you something, huh? What? This is only the beginning. Morning, Mr. Naylor. Oh, hello, Terrell. Just get in? Yeah. Get anything that might give us a lead on that bank teller? I think so. What is it? He's probably right here in town. How do you know? I talked to a friend of his. He told me the, the teller had just taken a sudden interest in playing horses. Uh-oh. Which probably accounts for the series of defalcations over the past year. I would think so. And since there's a race meet going on here, that's probably where he is with the last 10000 he took. Yes. Did you get a picture of him? Uh-huh. Then I guess you and I'll be out at the track this afternoon. Brownie. Hmm? Let me see that newspaper, will you? I'm reading something. I want to look at the selections. You got eight tout sheets there now. I'm making up a consensus. You can lose without that. Where's Adam? He's due at the hotel here any minute now. We're... uh... We're going to do a little playing on our own today, baby. That figured. Well, look, we made 400 yesterday. we got to put it to work, don't we? <laughs> you remember that old French saying, you can't accumulate unless you speculate. Joe. What's the matter? Take a look at this guy's picture in the paper here. Huh? Who does he look like? Hey. It's Adams. Yeah. Only his real name is Williams. What's a gig? He's a bank teller from a jerk town named Bentley. Skipped out and short $28,000. Hey, no wonder he has that bundle. Oh, this ain't so good. What do you mean? Well, the guy's red hot. If the law picks him up, he's a cinch to tell who helped him spend that money. You're forgetting one thing, sweetheart. The law ain't got him yet, but we have. I don't get it. Today's special is going to cost Mr. Adams. That must be him now. now. Let me handle this. Okay. Hello, Mr. Munson. Hiya, Mr. Adams. Come right in. Thank you. Hello, Miss Brown. Hi. Well, all set for another day of fun and speculation? Yes, indeed. I certainly hope we're as fortunate as we were yesterday. Well, I cased the card and come up with nothing but winners. In every race? That's right, Mr. Adams. Well, that's very reassuring. Just one thing, though, Mr. Adams. Uh, what's that? Today we bet a little different. How? Today, you're laying a thousand a race for me. What? Show him the paper, Brown. Okay. Here's a nice picture of you, Mr. Adams. Or should I say Mr. Williams? Oh. That's why we're betting my way. But now, look here. I can't afford to bet that kind of money for you. I have to win a lot of money myself. No kidding. You see, I've got to pay the bank back that $28,000. And betting on those winners is the only way I can raise it. The bank can wait, Mr. Oh, no, no. Look, you got no choice. Oh, yes, I have. I can discontinue our relationship right now. Joey's walking out. Oh, no, he ain't. (laughs) Well, you finally picked a winner. And now, before the FBI file on the fugitive horse player resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week, at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, somebody asked how much it was wise for the average man earning $5,000 a year to pay when he buys a home on mortgage. The answer was $12,500, or two and a half times his yearly income. On this sound basis, A man getting $50 a week won't be over his head if he buys a $6,000 or $7,000 house. 
But no matter what your income is, it will pay you to investigate the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan, which offers you five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Every dollar previously paid on principal is returned in full to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Two, a special cash fund is built up, always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, this cash fund increases as the mortgage shrinks. It can be used to shorten the term of the mortgage, pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in as little as 14 years. Four, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Five, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission, no bonus charges. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a house, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Fugitive Horse Player. Racing touts fall into the category of chiselers. And old chiselers are unscrupulous opportunists. To them, money is something to be gotten by any method, even though it be criminal, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI. The fact that the victim of the tout called Joe Muncie was himself guilty of a crime does not lessen Muncie's guilt in striking down his victim and robbing him. Rather, it stresses the meanness of his crime. It is nearly noon now, some two hours after Joe Muncie struck down and robbed the absconding bank teller, Fred Williams, alias Fred Adams, in Muncie's hotel room. The FBI's assistant to the agent in charge, Naylor, is sitting at his desk when Special Agent Terrell enters. I'm ready to leave for the racetrack whenever you are, Mr. Naylor. Well, since we're driving out, maybe we better get started. I gave some prints of the teller's photo to the police who will be working the track, too. Good. Between us all, we should be able to... Wait a minute. Naylor speaking. Yes? What? Are you sure? No, no. Just send him in the regular way. Right. We don't have to go to the racetrack, Terrell. Why not? Just watch who comes through that door. Mr. Naylor. Come in, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Well, for the love... Sit down. I'm sure you gentlemen are a little surprised. Well, that's hardly the word for it, Williams. I was going to give myself up anyway after I got the money back. But getting it back is out of the question now. Does that bruise on your face have something to do with it being out of the question? Yes, sir. Then let's have your story, Williams. From the beginning. Waiter. Yes, sir. Let's have a check, will you? Right. Come on, baby. Finish that coffee. Don't rush me. We just about got time to get to the station. You can eat at the track. Did somebody pass the law? We have to get there for the first race. I got the winner. You don't want to miss a sure thing, do you? Oh, you've been reading your own ads. Relax. But, honey, I... I I'm could... not so sure I even want to go to the track. Look, I've only got the first four races handicapped. We blow after the fourth. Okay? What about Adam Williams, whatever his name is? What? You're, you're afraid you go to the cops, huh? Yeah, aren't you? Honey, Mr. Williams is hotter than the inside of a glove. He can't go near the cops, so they put him away for 50. I hope you're right. I know I am. Now, look, we play the first four races, beat it back to town, get the car, and head west. Are you sure this is the room Williams was slugged in? Yes. Use the passkey, Darrell. Right. Well, 
Well, they didn't lose any time getting out of here. Come on, let's see what we can find. No telling where they're headed for. They'll leave a trace wherever it is. What do you mean? Muncie's got all those hundred-dollar bills Williams took from the bank. Oh. And we've already sent out lists of the serial numbers to all field offices this morning. Good. Anything in the desk over there? No. Not and a I, thing. I guess we'd better... Wait a minute. What'd you find? The scratch sheet and the racing form. I think we'd better go out to the track after all. Why? Muncie has handicapped four horses for today. Well? Muncie's a horse player, Terrell. Nothing short of an earthquake could keep him from playing these four horses before he jumps town. After slugging Williams? Muncie would figure that Williams couldn't afford to go to the police. That's true. Do you suppose he bet with a bookmaker or went to the track? We'll just have to gamble at the track. We've missed the first race. But Muncie's got three more to go to make us four. And we'll be there before the third race. Come on. That's two winners in a row, Brownie. That's par for the course. Let's quit. Are you kidding? Let me collect our 3000 then I'll buy our tickets for the third, and we'll head for the bar. I wish we were heading west. Honey, we will be right after the fourth. I don't like it, Joe. Paying off. You like that, don't you? Sure, Look, but... we leave this town with a satchel for baby. Now, come on. Let's collect. <laughs> Over here, Mr. Naylor. Well, we're in, fella. You mean you spotted Muncie? Nobody's here. How do you know? Two of those $100 bills have shown up. At the betting window? Uh-huh, the $50 window. I wish we had some positive way of identifying him. Williams can do that. But he's back in the city. He's on his way out here right now. Huh? I phoned the United States Attorney before we left town. The fourth race starts in 20 minutes. Williams will be here for it. Suppose Muncie's fourth selection doesn't win. He won't be going to the window for the payoff. What's he playing in the fourth race? Um, Ragman. Carol. Yeah? Here's where you and I have got to root a winner home. The horses are on the way to the starting gate, and Williams isn't here yet. Who's this coming now? Okay, you win. Mm -hmm. Did we make it in time, Mr. Naylor? Yes, Williams. Just in time to help us root Ragman home and catch Muncie. Good. That's going to be a real pleasure. Come on. Here's a good place to watch and root. It is now post time. Ragman's got post position three with the jockey wearing the bright gold gloves. I think I can get really get excited about this one. Uh, they all seem pretty quiet. Maybe we're going to get a start. And they're off. They're off. And for the lead, that's Ragman. The gap of two lengths, that is the Colonel, Tootsie, Buttons, and the last confusing. Come on, Ragman. With him, young man. With him. Stay up there, Ragman. He's moving away from him. At the half, it's Ragman by three. The Colonel and Tootsie head and head. A length back buttons and the last horse confusing. Come on, um, Ragman. Stay up there with that horse. Keep moving. I think he's going to do it. Going into the stretch turn, Ragman by three. Tootsie, the Colonel, and Buttons lap each other. A gap of eight lengths confusing. He's starting to quit. Ragman's quitting. Come Stay on. up there, Bobby. Come Go on. to the whip. Hold him up, Bobby. Come on, drive now. In the stretch, it's Ragman on the rail by one. Tootsie ranging up to the outside. Three lengths back, Buttons and the Colonel head and head. And 15 lengths back, confusing. Hang on, Ragman. Only a 16th to go, Bobby. Hit him, Bobby. Come on, you Ragman. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. He lasted. He lasted. He won. Ragman's number is up. His picture is for place. Let's go down to the $50 window. <laughs> Oh, baby, what a day. Four bets, four winners. Honey, I take back everything I said about you. Now do me a favor. Sure, honey, what? Let's go as soon as you collect. Sure, sure. We're going to be on our way in five minutes. Just let me get on this line here. Hello, Mr. Muncie. What? Adam. Williams is the name. What are you doing here? I'm here with these gentlemen. Huh? We're special agents of the FBI, Muncie. Joe! Wait a minute, miss. We want you two. Together, you make a wonderful parlay. <laughs> Frederick Williams was tried and convicted of embezzlement and sentenced to a long term in the federal penitentiary. 
Joe Muncy and Florence Brown were jointly tried and found guilty of attempted murder and are likewise serving long terms in the penitentiary. Joe Muncy did hit four winners in a row. Because touts, like anyone else who follow the horses, have their lucky days at selecting winners. But ask any veteran of the sport, and he'll tell you that you cannot possibly beat it for keeps. The bank teller, Williams, learned this the hardest way possible, the criminal way. And he learned, too, a lesson many hardened criminals could have told him, a lesson your FBI continues to prove 24 hours a day, that crime does not pay. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment, but now, let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure proof. To get the full story, talk to the Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives all details. You'll find him in your local phone book under the name The Equitable Life Assurance Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Homicide Hideout. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank, speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Homicide Hideout on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.